Okay, so welcome to this week's video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you get a chance. Um, also sign up for our newsletter. Today I'm going to answer a question that no one asked. It's gonna be a tech tip, and this is just gonna be one of these things I'm gonna do a little bit more of, and this is just something I was thinking about. I you know, uh, organized a little bit of stuff, so I thought I'd talk about it while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, so what I'm gonna talk about is how to create a our studio server on DigitalOcean, but this will work on any Ubuntu server. But at the end, I'll show you a super easy way to do it on EC2. Okay. So uh, DigitalOcean is one of these places where you can, you know, run your own server uh, really cheaply. Okay. And so go to bcafo DigitalOcean scripts and look at the README down at the bottom. There's gonna it's gonna say to set up an R Studio server. So these are the commands we're gonna need. But first we gotta start up our server. Okay. So we wanna click at DigitalOcean. We wanna log in. We wanna create a droplet. Droplet's what DigitalOcean calls its um, servers, right? It's got this whole like ocean theme thing. So right, you'll see when we click create droplet, you get a little swimmy fish, and. Um, you know, swimmy fish means DigitalOcean is thinking. Okay, it's done thinking. It's ready to create the droplet. Okay, Ubuntu 16.04. We definitely want that. Choose a size. Pick the cheapest one. Very important part. You definitely don't want the $640 per month monster server with 64 gigabytes of RAM. You just want the smallest one. And you can resize it later. It's not dynamic. You have to shut down the server, but you can resize it later on if you want to run a big uh, a big job or something like that. So you can resize it just for when you do that job and then resize it back to a small one super easily. Adding block storage, that's just if you want more hard drive space. So just leave that for right now. If you want to add more storage later on, you can do that. I, um, I live closest to New York of all these places, so I'm just going to leave this at New York. I'm going to click yes on my SSH key, ID RSA. I'm going to say, you know, I just want one droplet. I want the name. I'm going to use the default name, but probably pick a better name or at least add, if you don't pick a better name, then add a, add a tag or something like that. Just if you wind up with a lot of droplets, you, you wind up forgetting what each one of them is for. So maybe if I put our studio server on the tag, I'll remember. Um, but I, I like to choose better host names, but I'm not going to do it this time because I'm just going to destroy this as soon as I'm done. Okay, we get a minute, a little, few seconds of swimmy fish. A status bar is it's booting up our server. Here's a name. I got some other ones like our studio server is my kind of one that I use all the time. Okay, uh, it's booted up and there's our IP address. Now I need to give it a second because when I try to log in right off the bat, um, sometimes it doesn't let me because it's still booting up like the, you know, the SSH daemon, that sort of thing. Um, also, if you don't have your SSH, uh, your, uh, SSH keys set up, then what it'll do is it'll email you a password. You're going to have to use that password to log in. If you want, you can actually use the console here that has a little console. You can log in from there. But I like to use the SSH keys with my, my terminal. So I'm going to bring down my terminal. I'm going to SSH. Ah, I don't know why that's not working. Um, let me. Um, okay, so I want to SSH root at, and then my IP address, which I copied from DigitalOcean. And then it's going to ask if I want um, to add that fingerprint to my list of authorized keys or authorized connections. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm on my server. You know, I can do stuff like type ls. There's nothing there. Now I need to create a user. It's, it's generally not good Ubuntu practice to do everything from root. So let's create a new user. I've got the commands right here. Add user, new username. So why don't I add user, I'll call my new user rstudio. And then it needs me to enter a password. I'm gonna enter the password rstudio. Doesn't matter, oh, yeah. There we go. And then I'm just gonna leave all this stuff blank. Is the information correct? Yes, okay. Now uh, you wanna log in, um, or I'm sorry, we wanted to make it so that this new user has um, um, super user privileges. So my new user was our studio. There we go. Now that user has super user privileges. And then I wanna, uh, um, log in as that person. So now if you see, like, look at my command prompt, rstudio at, you know, 
Ubuntu, you know, so now it's our studio, not root. So I'm not root, but I have root access. So what this means is I have to type a little bit of an extra command to do root things. And this means that I just can't destroy, um, you know, uh, uh, important system files without actually thinking a little bit first before I do it. Um, I always like, you know, here's a trick, by the way, sometimes these uh, p command prompts get too long. So if you just do PS1 equals you know, whatever you want it to be now, I have a really short command prompt. Okay. All right. Now, uh, let's go back here. Here's the two important commands. Okay, first I have to get w get this little script that I wrote, and then while it's doing it, I'll explain the script. And then I just set up the script. Oh, I, it's got to, I got to give it my password, and then now it's starting. Okay. Now, let's go through what the script is doing set up rstudio.sh. Okay, so what it does is there's little notes here to tell you what it's doing at each step. It gets R, okay. Um, it, it's installing R base and um, R base dev. I got this all from this uh, person right here, so you should check if you want to see their rationale, and they also tell you how to set up a Shiny server right here. Uh, Dean Atali. Um, so I got almost all the commands from here. Uh, so it's really good. Read his blog post. That's it's a, it's fantastic. Um, any rate, so I also added uh, installing uh, R Dev uh, just because I like to have Dev on as well. Uh, this creates some swap space. We created such a small server, we don't actually have the the RAM necessary to actually install stuff. So we're going to fake RAM by using the hard drive, and that's what this sort of RAM drive is. Okay. Uh, and then um, these uh, libcurl, and these are these are libraries require, required. Um, and then this just installs two packages. Uh, it installs dev tools, and uh, it installs Shiny. But I think that was just from that guy's um, um, th his his package. I don't think that's actually necessary for our studio, so I should comment that out or get rid of it. And these dependencies are required by our studio server. And then we, it just gets our studio server and installs it with the, uh, gets a .deb file, start, installs it with gdebi, that's just uh, Ubuntu's um, and Debian's installation uh, command. And then the last line I added here is I don't like the fact that by default our studio server is on port 8787. I put something in so that it's on port 80. That just is adding a line to this. Uh, system file etc rstudio rserver.conf and then we restart the rstudio server. Okay, so let's see how our thing's doing. Not so good. Okay, so it, this is going to take a while, so uh, I might pause the video and come back while it finishes this. This usually takes, I don't know, several minutes. Oh, actually, no. While I'm doing this, I'll describe how to get an rstudio server set up on EC2. And this has the easiest way. Um, so if I type in like RStudio server EC2, uh, Lewis Aslett is the guy's name. Uh, there we go. He has very nicely gone ahead and created uh, the AMI here. So all you have to do is go down to um, you know uh, an AMI where you want it to be. So let's say U.S. East Virginia, okay click on it, okay, you got to sign into Amazon, okay, and then, you know, let's just say free tier, you know, you want a micro instance, the smallest instance that you can possibly get, okay, um, da, da, da. you want, all, you know, all your kind of common settings, and then launch, and then you have to, you have to choose a, uh, you have to choose a, a, um, uh, SSH keys. Okay, so now it's running. Let me get its uh, its uh, it's now booting that machine up. So this is on Amazon's EC2. Um, While this is going, let's check. Uh, still working here. All right, that's good. Um, okay, now it's up and running. 
we click on connect, we can see um, you know how to how to connect to it. But I just want the IP address. Let's go to that IP address. Now, sometimes, by the way, when you first start it up, there's a problem in that it takes a while for things to boot up. You also want to make sure um, that the ports are open. So here, when you when you um, one thing you may have to check. Ah, so probably what we have to check. Let me redo it again, just to double double check. Um, is the um, whether or not it's the firewall is letting in the uh, the traffic. So networking change security groups. So it's at this launch wizard. Um, Launch Wizard, it's at Launch Wizard 1. I think, so I have, let me see. I have this one, Launch Wizard 12 is one that works. So I'll show you it working first. Launch Wizard 12, let's change that. There we go. Now it's working. So um, I'll show you that it's working first. Now it's our studio and our studio. And now you just have an R. I'm not going to save that password. Um, but Louis Aslett, uh, who maintains this, does a great job. And among other things, he gives some scripts A, that'll set up Dropbox for you and B, that'll set up a new user, or at least set it up so you can change your password. If you log into this machine and create a new user, there will be an RStudio instance for that user. So um, if you do library RStudio AMI, um, you can change your password here in R, and you can link Dropbox in there. And the readme tells you everything about how to do it. So this is a really great, um, uh, that's a really great one. Um, great way to do it and let me just show you where is the network uh, da, da, da. Uh, so you want to go to networking and security and security groups and then just to remind ourselves uh, we were in launch wizard 12 okay so networking and security groups uh, where is it there we go click on security groups so launch wizard 12 so you want to um, you know, edit inbound rules. Okay, so you've got to make sure that you have um, port 80 added to the security groups, otherwise it won't automatically let the traffic in over HTTP. Okay, and then um, edit outbound rules. You also want port 80 there, okay? So uh, just make sure that whatever security group you're using that has those things set up and then it'll work. And then to destroy the, you know, to, to destroy our instance, right, you just go to instant state. So stop will just stop the machine. Reboot, obviously, will reboot, reboot it. Terminate gets rid of it. So, I, you know, I don't want this because I just created it for this example. So I'm going to terminate it. Yes, terminate. Okay. So that's how you can do that on EC2. Super easy. Okay. Now let's see how we're doing on installing it. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. All right, looks good, active and running. Okay, so where's our IP address? Copy that. Boom. All right, R Studio and R Studio. But here you're just entering your your username and password that you created. Okay, and then logged in. So now you've got R Studio, uh, R Studio running on a DigitalOcean server. Okay, now. Um, in order to destroy your droplet, click on destroy. Little swimmy fish for a second, and then destroy. You got to confirm. Now your droplet's gone. But anyway, it's a super nice way to run R Studio. I actually kind of prefer it, even at a desktop, to use my R Studio instance, R Studio server instance in the cloud. So give it a try. As I showed, it's super easy, both on EC2 and DigitalOcean. And uh, if you have any success, let me know in the comments.